Needle Felt, an elf on the shelf that is better than an elf made by artificial intelligence. Well, obviously, I don't think there's robots out there stabbing away at some wall. But once I've made my elf, I'll ask a couple of AI image generators that can create an image from text to show me their best needle felted elf on the shelf. And you get to judge whose is the cutest in the comments. And if I fail, I'll have to donate £50 to charity and make yet another video where I count how many times I stabbed the wall. And you know how much I love doing that. But that's not all. Throughout the video, I'll share 12 tips on ways to design and create an item to make it much easier to needle felt. So that even if you're an absolute beginner to needle felting, you can needle felt something that looks really good. So let's find out whether AI could be a useful tool for needle felting or is it only useful for creating fun images like these? Make sure you watch the end where we'll decide whose elf wins and whether I've been made redundant by artificial intelligence. So I'd better get started. I need to make the elf as cute as I can if I'm going to beat the AI. So what is my elf going to look like? I've always loved making things from being very young, but back then I used to get creator's block. I would really struggle thinking that to be creative meant you should be able to sit with a blank piece of paper and draw or make something amazing off the top of your head. And sadly, I used to think if I couldn't do that it meant I didn't have enough imagination. Then one day my art teacher at college explained to us that there's nothing really new in the world and showed us how to steal like an artist. That is to look at other people's work and transform it into your own creation. So my first tip when creating something new is to get inspiration by searching on Google and Pinterest for images of elves in this case. They don't have to be needle felted items. 2D cartoon images can be helpful too. Then take bits of what part Parts of the styles and designs you like from other people's elves and transform it into something that's yours. The AI will definitely be using images from the internet to create itself. You also need to bear in mind my next tip when doing this, which is asking yourself how big do you want your project to be? Deciding this now will help you get the proportions right and be easier in the long run, but this one can be a bit Goldilocks. If you make it too small, it will mean that adding the details is more difficult. But if it's too big, it'll be Christmas Day before you've finished needle felt. Him. I've drawn mine around 5 inches tall from the top of his head rather than the top of his hat. Tip 3. To help you get the proportions, size and shape of your needle felted item right, it'll be much easier if you have something to refer to as your needle felt in the various parts. I always have a sketch or printout of the project, or you could crop together a mishmash of the images you've found, and as one of my viewers kindly suggested, you could bring that image up on the screen the size you want your elf to be. I've got my drawing handy and refer to it a lot as I make the various parts for this elf. To receive a free copy of the template I've created for this elf, visit the link in the description below. Tip 4. Do you want to use an armature, or would you prefer not to? You don't have to use an armature, but the thing is, the whole idea of an elf on the shelf is that he can get up to all sorts, so ideally he'll need to be poseable. I'm going to use a 12 inch pipe cleaner, also known as chenille stems, to make the body, legs and arms. To see in detail how I made this armature, you might want to watch my tutorial on making sadness from the film inside out. However, you find making an armature a bit daunting, you can make him without an armature. Just use the template as a guide. However, I find an armature can help make sure the size and proportions of the person or animal are correct. Tip 5. While designing your project, think about what colours to use. Elves can have various coloured clothes and hats, but think about what colours of wool you already have, so that you don't have to buy lots more. I have plenty of red and white wool, so I'm giving mine a red tunic with a white trim, but I could have used more green or even yellow. I've wrapped some cool wool around the armature and then I'm wrapping his body in the red wool. I'm also covering the top of his legs. What do you think, Panda Cat? Well, he looks a bit skinny. Looks like he's got shorts on and going for a run. Yeah, he does a bit at the moment, but during my research, I noticed a lot of elves had stripy trousers, which I liked. So I'm going to alternate between wrapping white merino tops wool and red tops wool all down his legs to make them stripy. Oof, this is a bit time consuming, but I really want him to look good so that it's better than the AI's design. Otherwise, I'll be counting stabs in my next video. So tip six is when planning the design, think about how difficult it will be to felt. You could make the elf's legs solid green or even bright yellow like in Elf the movie. This would make covering the legs a lot simpler. When drawing the elf's hands, I did think about how I could make this elf easier and decided my elf would be wearing mittens so that I wouldn't have to felt lots of tiny fingers. The thumbs are fiddly enough. You don't really need to have thumbs, but who knows what detailed design the AI will come up with. And I want to make sure mine looks really good. 
If you're finding this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button. You'll also be helping other needle felters to find this video. <coughs> tip 7. This tip can come in handy a lot. I use it several times whilst felting this elf. Sometimes you need to felt a flat piece, such as for the bottom of his coat, his collar or a hat. <coughs> to work out what size and shape to make it, make a pattern out of paper first, so that you can try it for size around the body of your elf or project to see if it fits. Then you can make any alterations just as a dressmaker would with a clothes pattern. This means when you needle felt the wool into a flat piece of felt, you can tell if it's big enough for the item. Then cut around this paper pattern to get exactly the right shaped coat or collar that fits perfectly. <coughs> Tip 8. What wool to use? Well, this can depend on what you have available. Using carded batting for larger shapes can be easier and quicker to felt, so to make his head I thought it would be easier if I used some coloured carding batting I had. But I had a problem. The only carded batting I had that was suitable was this slightly peach or orangey colour. So I'm going to try blending this orange carded batting wool together with some white carded wool to make it paler. Ooh, that didn't work very well. I've blended tops wool with no problems before, but this has ended up blotchy. I'd be really interested to know in the comments if you've had any success in blending two colours of already carded bats together. I usually use carded core wool for the centre and then coat it with tops wool, but some people find it harder to get a nice finish using tops wool. But I'm going to hand card some cheap tops wool I got from Amazon by pulling it apart and sort of mixing it all up so that the fibres are going in lots of directions. This will make it easier to cover the head and get a smooth finish. I'm quite happy with the smoothness and I feel it went on quite easily. Don't forget when making his head to refer to your image or drawing to check that it's going to be about the right size in proportion to his body. <coughs> Tip 9. So I've given him a nose but how can I make his eyes cute and neat whilst keeping it easy? If you want to have a go at needle felting the eyes I give some useful tips on needle felting eyes and face details in my PDF on Etsy. But if you struggle to needle felt eyes perfectly round you can buy plastic safety eyes. Then you can use an awl to make a hole in the head. Make sure you wiggle it around to make the hole big enough, then glue the plastic eyes into the head. Of course, please bear in mind that this makes the finished item unsuitable for small children. The added bonus of using plastic eyes, though, is that they look shiny, and that bit of light reflected in them makes them look more alive than felted eyes. The white behind the black of the eye is optional, but I wanted to make the elf look to one side, hoping this would make him more cute. <coughs> Tip 10. To make it easier when attaching something symmetrical like ears for example, use sewing pins to pin the ears in place first. Then you can look at them from the top and different angles to make sure you have them both in the right place before felting them onto the head. You can also use a piece of cotton wrapped around the head or body of an item to make sure you attach the arms, for example, level with each other. <coughs> Tip 11 will really help you when attaching things to your project. Did you notice how I'd left some fuzzy unfelted wool on the ends of the ears? I did this on purpose as it makes it easier to attach them to the head. The unfelted wool almost acts like glue, sticking the two parts together as you stab it in. You can do this for anything you're attaching, such as arms or legs when you're not using an armature. <laughs> tip 12. My final tip is if in doubt, leave it out. By which I mean if you struggle with fine details, for example creating a thin line for his mouth or felting a buckle onto his belt, then he doesn't have to have a buckle or a mouth. Just adapt the design to fit your abilities. While I give my elf some hair and a hat, let's see what kind of cute elf artificial intelligence can come up with. Before I use an AI image generator, I'm going to ask ChatGPT, which is a text-based AI, to give me instructions on how to needle felt an elf on the shelf. Well, looking at the instructions, they're not too horrendous. They miss quite a bit of detail out in places, and it can't provide any images. And also, it sounds a bit weird in places. For example, it talks about felting a flat oval shape for the face. So let's try a free image generating AI called playgroundai.com. So here I'm typing a cute needle felted elf on the shelf and hitting generate to see what image it creates from this text. I've asked for four different images to give it a chance to come up with some variations. Oh dear. Ooh. Oh, oh no. Oh so then I added the words with two arms and two legs to see if it would come up with anything better. Well, it's a bit better. That is a bit better. Got a weird hat. Okay. Um, oh, 
Oh, oh, that looks evil. And I'm not sure what's going on there. To give the AI a really good chance, I also tried a different AI image generator, crayon.com, which was definitely easier to use and did come up with slightly better results. There were definitely less scary elves. Well, mostly. Hopefully I'm not in danger of redundancy just yet. I'll donate the £50 to the Trussell Trust anyway, and depending on your comments, I may or may not be counting stabs in a future video. Here's my finished out. Are any of these cuter than mine? The AI needs some help shaping the wool. It would vastly improve the results. If you're struggling with shaping the wool, you'll want to watch this video next, where I don't just give you lots of tips on how to shape the wool. I also show you how to practice seeing differently so that you can make any shape you like out of wool and create a needle felted masterpiece. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for watching.